Palantir Technologies is a private American software company that specializes in big data analytics. Headquartered in Palo Alto, California, it was founded by Peter Thiel, Nathan Gettings, Joe Lonsdale, Stephen Cohen, and Alex Karp. The company's name is derived from the Lord of the Rings. A Palantir is an artifact used to communicate with or see faraway parts of the world. The company is known for two projects in particular, Palantir Gotham and Palantir Metropolis. Palantir Gotham is used by counterterrorism analysts at offices in the United States Intelligence Community and United States Department of Defense, fraud investigators at the Recovery Accountability and Transparency Board, and cyber analysts at Information Warfare Monitor, while Palantir Metropolis is used by hedge funds, banks, and financial services firms. Palantir's original clients were federal agencies of the USIC. It has since expanded its customer base to serve state and local governments, as well as private companies in the financial and healthcare industries. CARP, Palantir's chief executive officer, announced in 2013 that the company would not pursue an IPO, as going public would make, "...running a company like ours very difficult." That being said, an October 18, 2018 report by the Wall Street Journal was considering an IPO in the first half of 2019 following a $41 billion evaluation. The company was valued at $9 billion in early 2014, with Forbes stating that the valuation made Palantir, among Silicon Valley's most valuable private technology companies. As of December 2014, Thiel was Palantir's largest shareholder. In January 2015, the company was valued at $15 billion after an undisclosed round of funding with $50 million in November 2014. This valuation rose to $20 billion in late 2015 as the company closed an $880 million round of funding. Palantir has never reported a profit, and in 2018 Morgan Stanley valued the company at $6 billion. History <laughs> 2003 to 2008, founding and early years Though usually listed as having been founded in 2004, SEC filings state Palantir's official incorporation to be in May 2003 by Peter Thiel, co-founder of PayPal, who named the startup after the Seeing Stone in Tolkien's Legendarium. Thiel saw Palantir as a mission-oriented company, which could apply software similar to PayPal's fraud recognition systems to reduce terrorism while preserving civil liberties. In 2004, Thiel bankrolled the creation of a prototype by PayPal engineer Nathan Gettings and Stanford University students Joe Lonsdale and Stephen Cohen. That same year, Thiel hired Alex Karp, a former colleague of his from Stanford Law School, as chief executive officer. Headquartered in Palo Alto, California, the company initially struggled to find investors. According to CARP, Sequoia Capital Chairman Michael Moritz doodled through an entire meeting, and a Kleiner Perkins executive lectured the founders about the inevitable failure of their company. The only early investments were $2 million from the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency venture capital arm in QTEL, and $30 million from Thiel himself and his venture capital firm, Founders Fund. Palantir developed its technology by computer scientists and analysts from intelligence agencies over three years, through pilots facilitated by in QTEL. The company stated computers alone using artificial intelligence could not defeat an adaptive adversary. Instead, Palantir proposed using human analysts to explore data from many sources, called intelligence augmentation. Topic: 2009 GhostNet and the Shadow Network. In 2009 and 2010 respectively, Information Warfare Monitor used Palantir software to uncover the GhostNet and the Shadow Network. 
The GhostNet was a China-based cyber espionage network targeting 1,295 computers in 103 countries, including the Dalai Lama's office, a NATO computer and various national embassies. The Shadow Network was also a China-based espionage operation that hacked into the Indian security and defense apparatus. Cyber spies stole documents related to Indian security and NATO troop activity in Afghanistan. Topic 2010 to 2012 expansion. In April 2010, Palantir announced a partnership with Thomson Reuters to sell the Palantir Metropolis product as QA Studio. On June 18, 2010, Vice President Joe Biden and Office of Management and Budget Director Peter Orsig held a press conference at the White House announcing the success of fighting fraud in the stimulus by the Recovery Accountability and Transparency Board Biden credited the success to the software, Palantir, being deployed by the federal government. He announced that the capability will be deployed at other government agencies, starting with Medicare and Medicaid. Estimates were $250 million in revenues in 2011. Topic: 2013 to 2016 additional funding. A document leaked to TechCrunch revealed that Palantir's clients as of 2013 included at least 12 groups within the U.S. government, including the CIA, DHS, NSA, FBI, CDC, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, Special Operations Command, West Point, the Joint Improvised Threat Defeat Organization and Allies, the Recovery Accountability and Transparency Board and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. However, at the time the United States Army continued to use its own data analysis tool. Also, according to TechCrunch, the U.S. spy agencies such as the CIA and FBI were linked for the first time with Palantir software, as their databases had previously been siloed. In September 2013, Palantir disclosed over $196 million in funding according to a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filing. It was estimated that the company would likely close almost $1 billion in contracts in 2014. CEO Alex Karp announced in 2013 that the company would not be pursuing an IPO, as going public would make running a company like ours very difficult. In December 2013, the company began a round of financing, raising around $450 million from private funders. This raised the company's value to $9 billion, according to Forbes, with the magazine further explaining that the valuation made Palantir, "...among Silicon Valley's most valuable private technology companies." In December 2014, Forbes reported that Palantir was looking to raise $400 million in an additional round of financing, after the company filed paperwork with the Securities and Exchange Commission the month before. The report was based on research by VC experts. If completed, Forbes stated Palantir's funding could reach a total of $1.2 billion. As of December 2014, the company continued to have diverse private funders, Kenneth Langon and Stanley Druckenmiller, in QTEL of the CIA, Tiger Global Management, and Founders Fund, which is a venture firm operated by Peter Thiel, the chairman of Palantir. As of December 2014, Thiel was Palantir's largest shareholder. The company was valued at $15 billion in November 2014. In June 2015, BuzzFeed reported the company was raising up to $500 million in new capital at a valuation of $20 billion. By December 2015, it had raised a further $880 million, while the company was still valued at $20 billion. In February 2016, Palantir bought Kimono Labs, a startup which makes it easy to collect information from public-facing websites. In August 2016, Palantir acquired data visualization startup Silk. Topic: <laughs> Products. Topic: <laughs> Palantir Gotham 
Palantir Gotham, formerly known as Palantir Government, integrates structured and unstructured data, provides search and discovery capabilities, knowledge management, and secure collaboration. The Palantir platform includes the privacy and civil liberties protections mandated by legal requirements such as those in the 9-11 Commission Implementation Act of 2004. Palantir's privacy controls purportedly keep investigations focused, as opposed to the expansive data mining techniques that have drawn criticism from privacy advocates concerned about civil liberties protection. Palantir maintains security tags at a granular level. Palantir previously ran the site Analyzeth, US, which allowed potential Palantir customers and affiliates to use Palantir Gotham to perform analysis on publicly available data from data.gov, usaspending.gov, the Center for Responsive Politics Open Secrets Database, and community health data from hhs.gov. Topic. Palantir Metropolis Palantir Metropolis formerly known as Palantir Finance is software for data integration, information management and quantitative analytics. The software connects to commercial, proprietary and public data sets and discovers trends, relationships and anomalies, including predictive analytics. Aided by 120 forward deployed engineers of Palantir during 2009, Peter Kavakia III of JP Morgan used Metropolis to monitor employee communications and alert the Insider Threat Team when an employee showed any signs of potential disgruntlement. The Insider Alert Team would further scrutinize the employee and possibly conduct physical surveillance after hours with bank security personnel. The Metropolis team used emails, download activity, browser histories, and GPS locations from J.P. Morgan-owned smartphones and their transcripts of digitally recorded phone conversations to search, aggregate, sort, and analyze this information for any specific keywords, phrases, and patterns of behavior. In 2013, Kavakia may have shared this information with Frank Bazignano who had become the CEO of First Data Corporation. Other The company has been involved in a number of business and consumer products, designing in part or in whole. For example, in 2014, they premiered Insitex, which according to the Wall Street Journal, "...extracts customer spending and demographic information from merchants' credit card records." It was created in tandem with credit processing company First Data. Topic Customers Topic Private civilian use Palantir Metropolis is used by hedge funds, banks, and financial services firms. Palantir Partner Information Warfare Monitor used Palantir software to uncover both the GhostNet and the Shadow Network. Topic: U.S. civil entities. Palantir's software is used by the Recovery Accountability and Transparency Board to detect and investigate fraud and abuse in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Specifically, the Recovery Operations Center (ROC) used Palantir to integrate transactional data with open source and private data sets that describe the entities receiving stimulus funds. Other clients as of 2013 included Polaris Project, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. U.S. <laughs> military, intelligence, and police Palantir Gotham is used by counterterrorism analysts at offices in the United States Intelligence Community and United States Department of Defense, fraud investigators at the Recovery Accountability and Transparency Board, and cyber analysts at Information Warfare Monitor responsible for the GhostNet and the Shadow Network investigation. 
Other clients as of 2013 included DHS, NSA, FBI, CDC, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, Special Operations Command, West Point, the Joint IED Defeat Organization and Allies. However, at the time the United States Army continued to use its own data analysis tool. Also, according to TechCrunch, the U.S. spy agencies also employed Palantir to connect databases across departments. Before this, most of the databases used by the CIA and FBI were siloed, forcing users to search each database individually. Now everything is linked together using Palantir. U.S. military intelligence used the Palantir product to improve their ability to predict locations of improvised explosive devices in its war in Afghanistan. A small number of practitioners reported it to be more useful than the United States Army's program of record, the Distributed Common Ground System DCGSA. California Congressman Duncan D. Hunter complained of United States Department of Defense obstacles to its wider use in 2012. Palantir has also been reported to be working with various U.S. police departments, for example, accepting a contract in 2013 to help the Northern California Regional Intelligence Center build a controversial license plates database for California. In 2012 New Orleans Police Department partnered with Palantir to create a predictive policing program. In 2014, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE awarded Palantir a $41 million contract to build and maintain a new intelligence system called Investigative Case Management to track personal and criminal records of legal and illegal immigrants. This application has originally been conceived by ICE's Office of Homeland Security Investigations HSI, allowing its users access to intelligence platforms maintained by other federal and private law enforcement entities. The system reached its final operation capacity under the Trump administration in September 2017. Topic. International Atomic Energy Agency Palantir has been pivotal for the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA to verify if Iran is in compliance with the 2015 agreement. <laughs> Palantir Night Live Event Palantir hosts Palantir Night Live at Palantir's McLean and Palo Alto offices. The event brings speakers from the intelligence community and technology space to discuss topics of common interest. Past speakers include Gary Kasparov, Nart Villeneuve from Information Warfare Monitor, Andrew McAfee, author of Enterprise 2.0, Nelson Dellis, memory athlete, and Michael Chertoff. Topic. Controversies Topic. Algorithm development I2 Inc. sued Palantir in federal court alleging fraud, conspiracy, and copyright infringement over Palantir's algorithm. Shyam Sankar, Palantir's Director of Business Development, used a private eye company as the cutout for obtaining i2's code. i2 settled out of court for $10 million in 2011. Topic WikiLeaks proposals 2010. In 2010 Hunton and Williams LLP allegedly asked Berico Technologies, Palantir, and H.B. Gary Federal to draft a response plan to the WikiLeaks threat. In early 2011 Anonymous publicly released H.B. Gary internal documents, including the plan. The plan proposed Palantir software would serve as the foundation for all the data collection, integration, analysis, and production efforts. The plan also included slides, allegedly authored by H.B. Gary CEO Aaron Barr, which suggested spreading disinformation and disrupting Glenn Greenwald's support for WikiLeaks. Palantir CEO Carp ended all ties to H.B. Gary and issued a statement apologizing to progressive organizations and Greenwald for any involvement that we may have had in these matters. Palantir placed an employee on leave pending a review by a third party law firm. 
The employee was later reinstated. Topic: <laughs> Racial discrimination lawsuit 2016. On September 26, 2016, the Office of Federal Contract Compliance Programs of the U.S. Department of Labor filed a lawsuit against Palantir alleging that the company discriminated against Asian job applicants on the basis of their race. According to the lawsuit, the company, "...routinely eliminated," Asian applicants during the hiring process, even when they were, "...as qualified as white applicants," for the same jobs. Palantir settled the suit in April 2017 for $1.7 million while not admitting wrongdoing. <laughs> British Parliament Inquiry 2018. During questioning in front of the Digital, Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee, Christopher Wiley, the former research director of Cambridge Analytica, said that several meetings had taken place between Palantir and Cambridge Analytica, and that Alexander Nix, the chief executive of SCL, had facilitated their use of Alexander Kogan's data which had been obtained from his app, This Is Me Digitalife, by mining personal surveys. Kogan later established global science research to share the data with Cambridge Analytica and others. Wiley confirmed that both employees from Cambridge Analytica and Palantir used Kogan's global science research data together in the same offices. See also Recorded future